much so far. We're gonna keep with our schedule and start on time. Others will trickle in as they get back, but hopefully all of you had something tasty to eat for lunch. Um, we have two uh, speakers for this afternoon session. Our first will be uh, JB Pauline. Um, JB is an associate professor in the Department of Neurology and Neurosurgery at McGill, the co-chair of the NeuroHub and chair of the Technical Steering Committee for the Canadian Open Neuroscience Platform at the Montreal Neurological Institute and Hospital, and a primary investigator at the Ludmer Center for Neuroinformatics and Mental Health. Today, he will be giving the talk Neurobagel and Nipopy for a Neurofederation. So uh, please welcome JB. So I guess uh, you've already guessed I'm a fraud here. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh... All right, thanks, uh, thanks very much, and thanks for the invitation. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm a little bit uh, outside of the very technical aspect that you've heard this morning, so please uh, bear with me. Uh, I still want to give you some uh, insight of what uh, is my work about and what I, th I mean, think of those problems a little bit. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, through the example of uh, two projects that we've developed in the lab, uh, and hopefully not only in the lab, uh, uh, that are called uh, Neurobegol and Ipopy. And uh, really, it is about uh, decentralization, uh, decentralization of a number of things, uh, uh, both on the processing and the, uh, and the data sharing aspect. Uh, so uh, the other title is why on earth did I work on uh, infrastructure? Because it's a hard problem. I just want to give you, before I go into those projects, a little bit of a, you know, my thinking about those things. Uh, Infrastructures are interesting beasts. Um, they are, uh, uh, first of all, let's say, let's, let's do the motivation first, which the motivation is why a distributed infrastructure for uh, processing and data sharing. And one of the first motivation is the, some of the work we did in the lab with uh, uh, Jérôme Docas um, uh, is the looking at, you know, if you're doing some machine learning on some data sets, on some, uh, some cohort of subjects, and you're trying to predict whether that subject is going to be uh, addicted to something, or if, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, their parking zone is going to evolve or whatever. Uh, if you do that on a, a specific cohort, a data set, and you try to generalize on another cohort that has maybe a different demography and some things, it, things generally fail. Uh, that's one of the problems. Uh, so, uh, so how do you get all those demographics and all those data sets across you know, many uh, different places uh, it, you know, and, and so on? That's one thing. The other thing that we did was looking at a little bit of a, uh, what we call analytical flexibility. Uh, I mean, what the field, uh, I think, called, uh, calls analytical flexibility, which is you're using one tool to, let's say, segment uh, some part of the brain, and then you're using another tool to segment the other part of the brain, and then you're looking at uh, maybe uh, connection between brain regions and all those things, and then you're using using those three or four tools, you find three or four you know like a very different result, uh, and that uh, is another problem on more like the processing side. You know when, when people choose you know this one solution versus the other solution, uh, and you know some people will say oh there's only one solution and this is mine and like you know and you know and uh, uh, it's uh, it's actually rarely the case. So so both on the side of uh, uh, generalizability of uh, you know uh, results and machine learning result in particular, but also uh, uh, any result really. And on the side of the, uh, of the uh, analytical flexibility, I think we need uh, distributed uh, aspects uh, uh, for that. So distributed data sharing remains, I think, the main problem, uh, really, uh, in, uh, you know, and still what we're doing. So uh, open neuro is great, and, you know, but there are you know, many other sources of uh, other uh, data uh, that you know, is not as easy as open neuro to access, you know, and that's uh, one thing. And reproducibility uh, crisis is actually a true problem. Analytical flexibility is a key aspect of that, uh, and also there are also data that can help there. Um, 
governance uh, of, I want to say a word on governance, because I think uh, uh, when we talk about uh, those infrastructure or ecosystem projects, uh, governance is rarely at the top of the list of things that we think about. Uh, and it should. Uh, it hundred percent should. Uh, so let's. Uh, I will try to uh, you know say a bit more on that. So infrastructure. Um, so first of all, they, on, they are only noticed when they don't work. That's the classic. Uh, you know. Uh, you know. Uh, and I think uh, Michael and uh, of us will uh, love the fact that this is the uh, German train system. And so it could be the French one. Or it could be the uh, Quebec one. We you know. Um, they are intertwined with our daily lives. So if you like, you know, your daily command don't, doesn't work. That's a, you know that's a real problem. Uh, they when built, they are really hard to change. And so the kind of a, the, the thing you're putting on your shoulder when you're choosing an ecosystem and infrastructure is is a really key aspect. And that's why governance is so important, uh, governance and sustainability aspect. And you know, and they're not competitive in a way. Like you know, if you have a road that goes from uh, you know like Düsseldorf to uh, uh, to uh, to go to Köln, uh, you don't want to build another one because you know it's it's too costly. It's too like you know I think that, so. So those are a couple of characteristics that. Have uh, picked up on the way. Of, uh, so uh, the aspect of governance, I think, is uh, is key. Uh, and whenever you embark in an ecosystem infrastructure, have a look at the governance, the transparency of it, inclusivity of it, uh, the uh, open aspect of it, and the accountability and trust uh, co component of that. Sustainability is not only about the funding problem. <coughs> Sustainability is also a little bit of the, uh, so that, that I picked up from you, uh, Michael, the, uh, the uh, no lock in uh, aspect and, and be, being able to actually burn that infrastructure down and still being uh, able to access your data or do the thing that you need to do for your job. Um, and then there's the implementation aspects, of course, the, uh, the portability, uh, interoperability aspect, the adoption of the standards, the modular aspect, you know, can I use only part of that, uh, and the user-oriented aspect as well, uh, which is maybe like, you know, uh, uh, not specifically for this room, but uh, is, uh, is so critical for uh, in other context. So you know, but the so distributed de development, uh, you know, you, you know all about the bus factor. Uh, my problem is the lab factor. You know, it's not the bus factor. It's not you know the number of developers that I may be able to to hire or things. It's the number of labs or the institutions that will adopt those things. And I don't want to be that lab. You know, that on the bus factor. That's not that's my goal here. Is not to not to be that. Uh, so, um, so how are we doing those uh, kind of uh, infrastructure project or ecosystem project? First of all, rely on standards, rely on community. Uh, we keep it small. <laughs> That's a very key aspect to me. Uh, if it if it has to be sustainable, it has to be kind of small and lean. Um, uh, and also, we try to build a uh, distributed governance aspect. I think that those are the key uh, uh, components. So let me talk about two little projects. I mean, little or not little, depending on how you see it. Um, and that's uh, so Neurobegol and Ipopi. Uh, so Neurobegol uh, and both of those projects are really uh, meant to be really lightweight. Uh, they're from neuroinformatic frameworks. Uh, and they're really trying to solve for the problems that have uh, been uh, motivated by, which is the distributed access uh, uh, problem and also the processing. So not reinventing, trying to streamline and simplify existing solution and uh, focus on very concrete use case that uh, we have. So NIPOPI and your big goal, um, NIPOPI is more on the uh, individual side. So, you know, what, what is the ecosystem you have to actually process your data? Uh, while your big goal is really how do you actually you know, share across you know, institutions or other things? Uh, so I will uh, say, you know, like a, a word on IPOPI, it really is like an extension of the BIDS uh, kind of a, a framework and a, 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 in a way that, you know, you can pick some of those components, okay, uh, maybe there's a, there's a component that is more on the DICOM to, uh, uh, to BIDS, but maybe there's a DIC, maybe you already have your NIFTs and or, you know, some other kind of files and then you can go from there. Um, so the, the modularity aspect uh, to me is really critical, but it's really to build the project Project as a specification based on our standards is the way you know, like is, is the way I push that thing. It's a, it's a specification and a training framework rather than you know not only a series of tools or an ecosystem like a tooling aspect. 
So that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, and, and it does help, you know, if you know to track things and, uh, and hopefully, you know, in the near future, we'll have the, all those uh, layer of uh, data run run and all those things to uh, track properly. But, you know, at least at the conceptual level, people need, and, and students, and, you know, they need to be aware of what they have to track, how to, and then give, the, give them the tool to actually track the things. Uh, so that's, uh, it's got a couple of nice little technical ideas there that uh, I won't go over, but. Uh, so once you have, let's say, processed some data locally and you have like, you know, organized well your uh, first data set and you have like to, done some processing and so on, you've uh, curated that data set, you've done the processing, you're tracking those things, um, then there's another data set. You know, it's never one data set. It's always, you know, like, uh, oh, uh, yeah, there's this, uh, you know, Parkinson court and then, yes, there's another one over there that you need to work with. Um, so that's, um, uh, that's where harmonization of data and, and making sure that, you know, that neurologist that actually is labeling things that way is all those things are also labeled in the same way. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, make sure that, you know, that those data are harmonized in a, in a reasonable way such that you can look at that. And when, if some other institution does the same thing, then of course you can have the, uh, the power of having a, a harmonized metadata that you can search across. So that's uh, the, the, you know, the uh, neurobagal kind of uh, things. So how do you harmonize things? So we took the, I think, uh, a very, uh, I mean, a separate way that, you know, that is usually, usually with how people usually do, do it usually. You let people do what they want locally, uh, and then, you know, you push that centrally somewhere, and then somewhere central, someone will actually say, oh, that data is this, this thing, and that data is this thing. What we want to do is actually say, hey, you name your things what, the way you want, but you create that little layer of interoperability of, uh, of metadata that is the same as the other guys, other one. Uh, so that is not working if you don't have a tool that does that very easily for someone that has had no technical background. Uh, so that's what we did, uh, is actually to look at, make the tool such that if you have a diagnosis that is called DX in one uh, Excel spreadsheet and one in another Excel spreadsheet, you, you actually link to the same thing. Uh, and, the, and, you know, having a proper, you know, like, uh, terminology and ontology for that. We're using, again, the, the most uh, common and the most uh, solid uh, kind of uh, uh, things for that. So it could be a uh, Medra, it could be Snowmed City or things. But the key aspect is the GUI that says, hey, I've got uh, the, uh, the metadata, the, uh, the, the, the data uh, a model on the left. I've got uh, you know, my actual data on the right. Can I paint, you know, like I paint this uh, column of uh, this Excel spreadsheet with the same you know, things here? And that's, uh, that's all what that uh, thing is doing. It's doing a little bit more because, uh, you know, uh, but you know, basically it creates a data dictionary that is uh, you know, the same data dictionary, it's, it's only one stupid file that will be added to the data set. Uh, but the thing that is cool is that it is going to be the same, you know, like a terminology uh, if uh, someone else does the same, same thing uh, somewhere else. So that's, uh, and you can look at it, it's uh, in the uh, neurobagold.org uh, kind of a... So again, uh, technically speaking, create something very, very lightweight. So that's the, an extension somehow of the, uh, the Beats JSON files that are the descriptor files that uh, you know, has this uh, uh, and, uh, semantic information on what, what are the data uh, is, you know, and what are the data not only at the level of the columns of the, the variables of those columns of the Excel spreadsheet, but also inside those, those columns. If sex is one or sex is M or S and so on, you have to analyze those things as well. So that's done at the level of the participants, which I think is not at the level of the data set level, which is a, a, an important aspect. Once you've done that, uh, well, I mean, actually doing a query is actually feasible. You have, like, you know, you have a common data model that is you know, distributed you know, in uh, different places. Um, doing a query on those, on those metadata at the participant level uh, becomes feasible. So, uh, so that's the, what the uh, neural query, uh, neural bagel query is, is doing. It's looking at all those metadata that have been harmonized and say, okay, now give me all the subjects that have, you know, age greater than 50 and also uh, get, uh, you know, have some that disease and all those things. Uh, you're not going to get uh, people working in neuroscience to do like uh, 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 you know, those queries. 
the, uh, you know, uh, all those queries have to be done through an, a GUI uh, if you want the, the tool to be used. I mean, yeah, I mean, you are a specific specific crowd here. Uh, the, the, you know, the, in the uh, the world, <laughs> the, the vast world, uh, like most of the people actually won't be able to actually open the terminal and do uh, and, and do anything with it. So, uh, so we created and we, we did a bit of a, this uh, you know web federated query tools that will uh, launch uh, this uh, uh, GraphQL queries. Uh, you know, on the uh, um, on the uh, on, on those uh, distributed data set. Uh, so once you have done the query, and you can say now I can have like you know, ten subjects from this data set and uh, twenty subjects from this data set. I can actually say, hey, data lad, can you move the actual data from those data set to uh, my place or, or, or somewhere else? So I think that's uh, that's that ecosystem to be. Uh, uh, to be to be worked on uh, is is a bit different from a I think I don't think I've seen something like that in neuroscience already uh, as the level where user can use and uh, and the the level of uh, instability uh, uh, not instability the the level of um, uh, how do you install easily those things and I think uh, you know, at the moment if you want to install those things it's a uh, it's uh, really a matter of like you know Docker compose up and uh, and that's it and you're going to have you know those uh, uh, those uh, that uh, federated infrastructure so one additional problem is obviously the um, the uh, uh, how those things work if you have sensitive data um, at the moment, uh, uh, so what we don't, what uh, Seb and the team have done is basically uh, separate uh, the, uh, the graph store and, uh, and the API to the graph store, such that the API can be uh, uh, you know, like, uh, configured uh, you know, such that you can, you can actually answer, oh, uh, I have three subjects coming from that data set, and, you know, from, uh, I have three subjects you know, for your query, uh, but I can't tell you any more of that. You know? um, or maybe uh, if it's three subjects, I can't even tell you that. You, you need to have at least five or ten subjects to be able to have an answer from the. Uh, you know. or, or you can say, yes, I have things, you know, that's it. Or you can answer the, with the full, uh, kind of a, uh, you know, like a metadata and data uh, if you have access to that. So the, the 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 configuration, the local configuration of the uh, of the API is the thing that's actually uh, uh, is making that uh, kind of a, uh, promising and, and interesting for folks because they can, they can say, okay, I'm interested because I can keep control on the data. I know uh, I will be the one deciding who has access to what. Uh, which is uh, different than the uh, so the uh, local control and visibility, the data curation by the owner, uh, I think is critical. One of the things that um, uh, uh, we, we is interesting as well is that if you have an open node like Open Europe, um, you know all the private nodes can actually see all the, everything else. You know what you can't see are the private nodes. Um, yeah, so. Um, at the moment, there's a, a number of uh, you know, nodes that are being created or have been created. Uh, so if you look at the, uh, the query the, that we have, uh, there's already federation between Open Euro in the, uh, our own QPN data set, parking some data set, and a few things. Um, and, but there's a lot, a lot of interest in Europe and in other places where, again, the data, uh, you know, people want to keep control on the, the local governance of the data is super important. And thank you, Gopanero, for that. <laughs> um, take a message, uh, build standards and uh, community of practices is the, is the you know, I would say, the number one thing. Uh, be sustainable, uh, distributed governance for distributed infrastructure and ecosystem, I think, is, uh, is one of the critical things. I put the, you know, the four things that I think are the motivation and the incentives, because if you want to work on those projects in the long term, you have to work with the incentives. So uh, love, fame, mon fame, money, and rules are the kind of the four uh, kind of things. Uh, uh, and in that room, there's a lot of love. Uh, but I can tell you, outside, there's, you know, people are interested more in fame and uh, or money, or, and sometimes they really have to follow the rules. Uh, but uh, you know, that's, uh, that's the, uh, uh, the, those are the incentives that we have to work with. And uh, thank you very much. There's a lot of uh, collaborations uh, with uh, many of people, and uh, thank you. You have time to take a few questions if you'd like. Sure, if there are any. Any questions? I have a question. Um, 
I'm interested now if you could maybe go back to. Oh, sorry. Because uh, I missed the part of, of where you explain how the nodes work. So how would you deploy that like, like on your map with the different geographic locations? Does a node specifically have to be queried to understand? Does that node have to have the knowledge of what data sets you have access to? Or can you, can you explain so, a bit more about that? Let's say you have a data set. You have done the harmonization of the uh, phenotypic uh, and, 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 and through bids, you have done the harmonization as well in some ways of the, uh, the neuroimaging data. Uh, uh, a node is simply like you, you have extracted, you have done that dictionary, extended dictionary of the data. Uh, that is turned into a little graph store, uh, and a node is, uh, you know, like a uh, spinning off that little graph store uh, and the API to that graph store. Then the only thing you have to do is say, hey, I've got on that URL, I've got a node, and you configure locally your node to access whatever you want, uh, you know, people to access, or whoever you, you know, like you know, the the next stage of that project is really to look at the uh, 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 the layer of uh, uh, who has access to what that can be configure locally uh, you know so uh, so I think uh, uh, so the authorization so authentication layer uh, that we are going to work on we are working on with uh, the GF4GH people so the uh, the genomic community has uh, done a lot of uh, work on uh, uh, you know authorization authentication aspect uh, so we're going to you know, try to work on, the, on their, you know, solution for, the, uh, for that. So, so everything is kept local. The only thing that is kind of shared with uh, others is the, uh, the URL or, the, you know, where, where that node is. Uh, and that's it. And everything else is, uh, is locally. Uh, uh, and I think, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, Thanks. Yes. Actually, um, we'll uh, save questions, I think, for the panel. Okay. <laughs>